So schematically, the way we visualize this issue is that the brain should be like a hybrid car. It should be functioning on two different fuels. But in Alzheimer's disease, the metabolic switch is defective. So it should be functioning about 70 to 95 percent uh, on glucose. But the problem uh, exists starting at the uh, beginning of Alzheimer's disease. With ketones, it should normally be about 5%. If you, if you do intermittent fasting or on, on a low carbohydrate intake, then the ketone contribution will be much higher. But there's no decrease in brain ketone uptake. Uh, and this has been demonstrated not only in the PET studies that I've just shown you, but also in, in, in work that I've just reviewed here and don't have time to discuss with arterial venous difference and gene expression studies as well. So th three different methods confirm the ketone uptake by the brain, the capacity to take them up is normal in Alzheimer's disease. So this ability to switch from glucose to ketones is the challenge that we're trying to overcome. By way of summary, um, the study that we did was called the Benefic study. And what we showed with this randomized controlled trial is that the ketogenic MCT increased blood and brain ketones. The, uh, this randomized controlled trial used 30 grams per day of ketogenic MCT or a matching placebo. We fed it for six months. We had excellent adherence. So 79% of people completed the trial in both arms. Excellent safety profile, uh, cardiometabolic safety that is. And uh, we showed that we could reduce the brain energy deficit, the brain glucose deficit by about 40%. The MCI were heterogeneous, so not all had an am amnestic problem, but some had other cognitive issues. This graph is showing that six months after the start of the study, the ability to produce ketones in response to a dose of ketogenic MCT was absolutely intact, something that was not known at the time. So the body can produce ketones uh, from ketogenic MCT without difficulty under these circumstances. And this is increasing the ketone uptake by about twofold, which corrects the glucose deficit in the brain by about 40%. The cognitive outcomes are obviously of interest in this situation. And what we are showing here is that five out of five of the cognitive domains were improved. So episodic memory, which is uh, assessed with the free and cute recall test, improved by one word, on the ketogenic MCT group, this is the, the change in words from pre, pre to post test. So zero uh, was the value for the placebo, no change, a one word improvement out of 16 on the ketogenic MCT. Verbal fluency actually went down on, on the placebo group and uh, improved uh, on the ketogenic MCT group by a difference of three words. And the Boston naming test showed no change on placebo and a 1.3 word increase. I point out that this change in free and cute recall has been reported by people, uh, other people besides us, that um, an improvement of this sort should be associated with the delay in the onset of Alzheimer's disease by one to three years. Critically for understanding what ketones are doing for cognition is the relationship between the change in cognition shown on the y-axis and the change in ketones shown on the x-axis. So these data are for plasma ketones, which almost any laboratory can measure. I also have the data for the brain, but won't be showing them, but that's more obviously uh, not available to everyone. So I, I thought what was most useful would be to show the change in plasma ketones because they're tightly correlated with brain levels of ketones as well. So the, the ketones increase um, in the ketogenic MCT group, they don't change uh, on average in the placebo group. And there's a positive straight line relationship with the improvement in episodic memory, executive function, and language. Clearly, these are not outstanding correlations, but they are present. And this is a pre-post difference. So it's actually fairly impressive to see. Uh, and there's also uh, some people on the ketogenic MCT did not show a significant improvement in, in the ketone levels in the plasma. So this level of ketones uh, produced by 30 grams per day is, is having some benefit in some people, but perhaps it will be possible to improve on the uh, ketogenic efficacy of this type of treatment in future. Turning to the other two cognitive domains, uh, what we see uh, for one with processing speed is that this is a map 
of, of the uh, tracks, the white matter tracks in the brain and the uptake of ketones in them. So this has never been shown before, but our, our imaging colleagues have been able to actually measure the ketone uptake and the fluorodeoxyglucose uptake in these tracks. It's a, a modest level in this blue-green color in the tracks before giving the ketogenic MCT. And afterwards, you can see that they light up and, and the color goes up to, to yellow, to orange, especially where the tracks enter the gray matter. So this is demonstrating that the white matter tracks are, are biologically uh, active, energetically active, and can consume ketones in this situation. And when we look at the relationship between the, the uptake of ketones in these various tracks and the change in processing speed, we can see that there's these bars are showing the correlation coefficient between these two parameters, the tracked ketone uptake versus the processing speed, the ability, the speed at which people process information. And in the overall white matter, we see a correlation of better than 0.5. And in some of these tracks, it's upwards of 0.6, with the important exception of the posterior cingulate, which is clearly an important area in the brain for the progression of cognitive issues towards Alzheimer's disease, in which we don't see such a strong correlation at all. Tracks are mapped in this glass brain, and these are areas that are all affected in Alzheimer's disease, and we're seeing uh, essentially an improvement in myelin integrity in these tracks by the presence of ketones, and it's directly related to the improvement in processing speed.